Today, we are going to be installing Libre Boot on a KGPE D16 server motherboard. The first thing you're going to need is a KGPE D16 motherboard. There are three revisions of this motherboard 1.03G, 1.04, and 1.05. Thankfully, all three of these revisions are compatible with Libre Boot, so as long as you get this motherboard, you should be okay. If you have not bought the motherboard yet, I'd highly recommend getting it with a heatsink, specifically the one that has a 60mm fan. For heatsinks for this socket is pretty rare and then most of them are flat for servers and in which they're gonna get really really hot. For me, I got the one with a 60mm fan and later on I could put a Noxical fan on it to make it really cool and sound way less loud. So I recommend doing that. The next thing you're going to need is a processor. I'm using the Opteron 6276 CPU, which is a 16 core 60 thread processor. Now, on Libreboot's website, it says you are able to use the 6300 series CPUs. For now, Libreboot allows microcode updates in the ROMs. However, I have never tried a 6300 CPU myself, so I can't guarantee that it'll work. And also, in order to use the 6300 series, you have to use the latest version of the Libreboot BIOS, in which I tried and for some reason it does not boot. I can't get it to work. So in this video, I'm gonna be using the 2016 BIOS, which absolutely works with my hardware, but it only works with the 6200 series CPUs. So I recommend getting that. The next thing you're going to need is RAM. Now RAM seems to be the biggest culprit in why some Libre Boot compatible machines don't boot. It's probably the reason why my KGPE couldn't boot with a newer version of Libre Boot. So it's important to get the right sticks for your computer. Now, I've installed the 2016 version of Libre Boot, and I've been able to get these sticks of RAM listed on the screen to work. In this video, I'm going to use the Hynix stick of RAM. If you want RAM with a higher chance of working with your computer, I recommend this one. The first thing we need to do is locate the IKVM module. That will be located to the bottom left of the motherboard. The IKVM will be located in this black socket right here. So the IKVM looks like what's pictured on the screen right now. And that is the IPMI IKVM module. And we need to remove this for Libre Boot will not boot with it on. So in order to remove it, go ahead and grab it. And just gently pull it out of the socket. And it should come right out. As you can see here, I don't have one. You may have one and if you do, Go ahead and remove it, otherwise you're ready for the next step. The IKVM also adds a backdoor similar to the Intel management engine and it also requires proprietary firmware in order to run. So even if Libre Boot did boot with this module on, I would still recommend removing it. Go ahead and put the computer together. When installing the CPU, make sure to gently close the socket for we don't want to break any pins. Go ahead and install the RAM and make sure to clean the CPU and heatsink before adding thermal paste. For the thermal paste, I make a straight line first and then I add three dots on top of the CPU and three dots on the bottom of the CPU. For me, that gives a good spread of thermal paste around the whole CPU. When installing the RAM, make sure you have the right configuration for your setup. I have one CPU and four dim sticks, so I'm going to be installing my RAM in the top four orange slots. The BIOS chip is located to the bottom right of the motherboard. So I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to pull out the BIOS chip. I went ahead and bought some heat shrink that I got at Lowe's for about $10. It's like this tubing that I can use to wrap around the pliers, so that way I won't scratch my BIOS chip. Just like that. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and put the pliers on top of the ballast ship and grab it firmly but pull it out gently. Once it's out, we'll be ready for the next step. So the programmer I'm going to be using is a CH34NA mini programmer. I paid about $13 on Amazon for this. And it's very cheap, readily available, and I had no errors or issues using this tool to flash Libby boots onto the BIOS chip. So go ahead and lift the lever on the CH34NA, grab your BIOS chip, see the notch on the BIOS chip, make sure it's facing to the back of the CH34NA, Go ahead and drop it in, pull the lever down. This will lock the ballast ship onto the CST Vone. You should be good to go, ready for the next step. All right, go ahead and plug in the CHD 4 a to your computer. Once it's plugged in, we can go ahead and install Flash ROM. Flash ROM is a program we're going to need in order to flash the new Libreboot BIOS and to back up the old BIOS. And go ahead and install it. For me, I already installed it, so now I'm going to the next step. Let's go ahead and back up the old BIOS. Type the command sudo space flash rom dash dash programmer cst 4 a underscore spi um, dash r and name the file. I'm going to name it backup.bin for that is the old BIOS and I'm going to name it backup. It's going to be reading the chip off the cst 4 a Alright, and once it's done, we can do a SHA-256 sum to verify the hash. Alright, and let's compare this to others, so we can do it again. Let's back up the ROM again. I'm going to name it this time Backup2. Go ahead and let it do it again. Alright, now let's verify the hash against this backup to make sure we're getting a good read. Looks like we are. I normally do it twice, you can do it a third time if you want to, I'm only going to do it twice. Now go into the directory where your Libby ROM is located. Once there, type the command sudo flash rom dash dash programmer ch341a underscore spi dash w and then the Libby boot ROM. I'm going to be installing 2016 Libby boot, but you can install whatever version you want. Once you see the word verified, your job is done and you have officially installed Libby Boot onto your BIOS chip. Go ahead and remove the cst 4 a from your computer. Now the notch on the BIOS chip should match the notch that's on the socket on the motherboard. It should be pointing to the left and you should be able to read what the BIOS chip says. should be facing just like this. Go ahead and lay the ballast chip on the socket and push it in. If you want to use a graphics card on this motherboard, go ahead and locate the VGA controller jumpers which are located to the bottom left of the motherboard. The jumper is located where it says VGA on the motherboard. Go ahead and remove the top jumper and move it over to the right. This will allow you to disable the onboard graphics of the motherboard, which will allow you to use your own graphics card. Just like that, now you can use your own graphics card. Once you are ready, go ahead and build your computer, turn on the power supply, and turn on the computer. Lee Reboot will take about 1 minute to boot, but once it does, it should boot straight into your operating system with no problems.
looks like Linux is booting, which means the process was successful. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. If you are interested in getting your own Libby Booted or Core Booted machine without going through the hassle of installing it yourself, check out my eBay store where I sell pre-installed Libby Booted and Core Booted ThinkPads and desktops. If you like what you see in this channel, stick around for more content like this.